me read a little verse to you from Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. First, let me ask the question, do you think this is what Saul of Tarsus was like? I just can't imagine it. In other words, what he's writing about here is something that he himself probably struggled with a great deal and had to consciously do. I think this is true of all of us. In life, you know, the rough and tumble of life, the hard things of life, the challenges of life, we can become hard. We can become insensitive. And especially when we see so much need, overwhelming need everywhere we look, it's easy for us to become desensitized. So I want to talk about that just a little bit. Notice sort of two contrasting ideas here. On the one hand, the term tender mercies, which our King James rather awkwardly translated as bowels and mercies, the word actually is a strengthened form of the word spleen. And it actually has to do with our internal organs. And Actually, when Judas Iscariot, when he hanged himself and the rope broke and he fell into the valley and, well, you know what happened. That's, that describes these organs. So there is this idea of something internalized, not superficial, not make-believe, not put on, but the word is actually describing what we call now the pit of our stomach. At least that's what my grandparents would call it. So when you're driving down the road, you come on an accident, you see a sheet covering a body, and you feel it there in the pit of your stomach. It's spontaneous. You don't have to work it up. It's something that responds simply your common humanity. You feel it. And so that's the idea here, something that's internal, something that's real, that touches you fundamentally in your heart, in your deep recesses of your personality. But on the other hand, it says, put on these things. It's like something that's like a second skin. And I was reading about this issue of the sense of touch. And these scientists at the engineering school in San Diego, they took some silicon wafers, which are the building blocks of the chips that we find in our computers and our phones, this very thin piece of silicon. And one of them, they oxidized, they removed any oxidation from the surface to make it slick. And the other, they put on a kind of Teflon coating. The difference between the two wafers was one molecule thick. And when people were called on to touch them, they could tell the difference. <laughs> the difference of one thickness of molecules. It's astounding. And so the Lord is saying, I want, I want, your tender mercies to be like a second skin. I want you to be highly sensitive to the needs of those around you. This is Paul's desire, and it's certainly something Paul learned. I mean, you can imagine a man like Paul, hard-nosed, uh, able to drag men and women before uh, kangaroo courts and see them executed. Uh, he was a hard guy. And Yet he learned um, as holy and beloved the elect of God, the ones chosen by God to be the demonstrators of his tender mercy. This is a phrase that's commonly used. The psalmist used it all the time, the tender mercies of God. And he calls us to do this. On the one hand, to feel it very deeply, but on the other hand, to wear it like a second skin so that we're highly sensitive, so that we see needs before others may and respond to them. So 
I want to tell you a little story about a man I met in Northern Ireland. His name is Wilmer. Wilmer was a shepherd. And um, he said to me one time, I was talking to him, he was uh, responding to the ministry. He was very sensitive. He would weep um, at truths that touched his heart. And uh, I was talking with him. I was, I was impressed with this man. He had a very strong Northern Ireland accent. He obviously was a man from the countryside and had lived his life out in the open with the sheep and so on. And I talked to him a little bit and he told me, he said, you know, I used to be a very hard man. I was a legalist. I was very critical of my brethren. And then God put me on my face in my garden with a heart attack. And I ended up in the hospital. And all these brothers that I'd been critical of they came to visit me. And God gave me the opportunity of apologizing. And he said, you know, through this experience, God tenderized me. And I heard from another source that Wilmer had been down in Dublin preaching in the open air. Now, if a man from the hill country of Northern Ireland was preaching in Dublin, everybody in Dublin would know it. It's a very different accent. And so he was preaching, and there was a large crowd. Another Christian who observed this told me he was preaching. And as he was preaching to the crowd, the tears were dripping off his chin as he was weeping, pleading with people to come to the Savior. This formerly hard man, by his own confession, now was touched by the tender mercies of God. And, and as he was weeping, there were some young people making fun of him, joking about him. Boo-hoo. And there was a little Irish woman, and she walked over to Wilmer across the open circle. And she turned to these boys, and she said, you should be ashamed of yourself. God had to bring someone from the north to come down here and weep for Dublin. You should be weeping for Dublin. And she opened her big handbag and she pulled out a handkerchief and she wiped away Wilmer's tears. Shame on you, she said to the boys. I tell you, folks, if only as the beloved of God, holy and beloved, you see the strong distinction between those two words? Someone who stands against sin, and yet someone who is a loving person. Someone who doesn't yield to temptation, doesn't yield to compromise, but who manifests the love of God. And, and Paul is saying, by using this term, to put this on, it's like every pore in your body is sensitized to the needs of others. This is the kind of person the world needs today. Someone who is holy, someone who takes sin seriously, but who loves sinners. That's what God does to put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long suffering. Don't give up on people. Don't be insensitive to their needs. Be kind. Be humble. Be meek. These are the words of Scripture. This is what Paul was enjoining the saints to do. This was something like Wilmer. I think Saul of Tarsus had to learn the hard way because he didn't come by it naturally. And this is what Paul is saying, that this kind of sensitivity is something you put on. It doesn't come naturally. And you should wear it as a second skin. You should be as hypersensitive to the needs of those around you as the scientists in San Diego discovered. One molecule thick. The touch of the child of God sensitized by the needs of those around and manifesting 
the tender mercies of God in an increasingly hard world.